rock with me, fam If I never get a million, I settle for these fans Cause at least with them, I never have to change who I am Record label off the table, I'ma stay my own man Cause I rock with those that rock with me, fam If I never get a million, I settle for these fans Cause at least with them, I never have to change who I am Record label off the table, I'ma stay my own man Sit and ponder this, you wonder why I'm dominant The bars you spitting competent, it makes me wanna vomit quick I bully all these rappers around me by spitting on the shit Clean up all the trash you kick and fucker, I mean all of it You seem to really think that people care about what you rhyme about But honestly, they sitting there just waiting till you close your mouth Me, I like to rhyme about corruption in its large amount You just be the type of phony shit that I be talking about The type of shit you never do or you don't even have The same type of track that you can hear from nearly every rap I'm on some other shit, you too dumb to cover it You say nobody cares, but look, these people Loving it. This is a new movement, taking it back to the basics Where the fans really listen, they can tell that you're faking And I don't need the mainstream to come from sign my stuff nope. Just the people that I'm rocking with is more than enough I rock with those that rock with me, fam If I never get a million, I'll settle for these fans Cause at least with them, I never have to change who I am Record label off the table, I'ma stay my own man Cause I rock with those that rock with me, fam yeah. If I never get a million, I'll settle for these fans yeah. Cause at least with them, I never have to change who I am nope. Record label off the table well, I'ma stay my own man Yo, I honestly swear If it wasn't for y'all I promise that I wouldn't be here I'd be back on the block Shit, not giving a fuck about rap at all I keep doing this Cause all of y'all accept my flaws When I was suicidal My friends neglected me I dropped the and listen And all of y'all respected me People that I didn't know Started to check for me Y'all were the spice That was missing in my recipe Damn Y'all the reason that I don't give up The reason I raise my middle fingers up when I'm stuck Y'all built me up when I was going bogus yeah. Got messages that my music help me stay focused That's when I noticed after an album in a few verses later That my fans were the features in my content speak up That's why we're here to take up all the clowns that the greatest uh-huh. To comprehend the sounds you need an earth jerk translator yeah, I is. fuck with those that fuck with me fam Since I got a following I don't have to sell grams I got myself together, developed a new plan Rap made me who I am, I have to thank my Fans. I fuck with those that fuck with me, fam Since I got a following, I don't have to sell grams Got myself together, developed a new plan Y'all made me who I am, I have to thank my fans, yo What's good, people? Welcome to the fifth, that's right, fifth episode of the Rock With Us podcast Oh I'm yeah Tombstone the Dead Man, artist, vlogger, CEO of Land of the Dead Entertainment Head Reaper at Reaper Nation and Skyfather, ruler of all pantheons. And this is my partner in crime, rhyme, and video games. Adequate. Some of you guys know me as Adequate. Some of you guys know me as AK. I am the CEO and owner of There It Is Entertainment. I also do YouTube videos and do little segments about herpetology, science, skepticism, and rationality. So, yeah, and we're back, and this is our fifth show. And I really feel excited about this one. Good, because there's a lot to be excited about. We got some pretty heavy content to start off with. So I think we should just like roll right into it. Yeah, and I think maybe some of our opinions may clash with the listeners. But just have an open mind and hopefully you guys will understand where we're coming from. So let's get into that first um, segment. All right, so you know most of you guys that are... the the are aware of my past and where I came from. I come from Baltimore City. Born and raised, lived there for over 30 years, um, and I've been out of the city for probably about five or six years. Um, and if you've been paying attention to what's going on in the news, you know that you know it was a, they, had a, they had a riot, a small riot um, in the city um, that pretty much took up everybody's 24-hour mo- a news cycle for a week or right. whatever. Um, got, it basically was because, you know, the guy, uh, Freddie Gray, uh, was arrested by the police and somehow he wound up with a broken neck hmm. and, um, he's not the first, there's been other victims of this exact same thing right. where, you know, they're in police custody and all of a sudden they have these injuries where they die in custody. This is not the first time this has happened. Um, also there is a history in in that town and like a lot of um impoverished towns there's a history of police brutality um that has gone mostly unreported at least to the nation at large right um 
But they've paid off. The Baltimore City Police Department has paid off so many lawsuits. And it was the dirty little secret. It wasn't no secret in Baltimore. But it was a secret, I guess, the places outside of Baltimore. Yeah, the rest of the nation. On. Yeah, you know. So, um, basically, they, they had protests out there. And people were protesting. And, and the vast majority of the protesters were peaceful. The vast majority of them just had signs and, and they were marching and things like that. But you did have, I think I want to say on the second day of the protest, you had uh, a bunch of kids, high school kids, that that went out there and they were angry. Pretty yeah. simple. They were angry. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people a lot of people like to point out the fact that oh but they burned down the store and they robbed stuff in the store. But what I would say to that is, you know, a thief runs from the police after they right. take their stuff. They don't sit there and face off against them. And right. that's how I know it was more than just that opportunity stuff. It's real easy to dismiss that anger by by placing it in the category. They just wanted free stuff. Or, or why would you do that to your own neighborhood and yeah, da-da-da? But what, what, but what people need to understand is that, like, most urban neighborhoods where the majority of the people that live there are black or Hispanic. Those aren't our neighborhoods. We're just tenants there. You know what I mean? Because all the stores are owned by people who don't live in those areas. So when they talk about, oh, well, you're destroying your own community. I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't feel like it is our community because even how the police treats us, they don't treat us as if we are a part of the community. They just treat us as if, we're, it's like we're already guilty before we even done anything. You know what I mean? Right, right. And that's the so, thing. Like, don't get me wrong. I understand the whole idea. of Because the thing is, there it is possible for you to understand without condoning. And the fact right. is, you know, yes, it does make a hardship. Because if you burn the store down, and that was the store that was close to you, now you got to go 10 miles in another direction, get on the bus, plane, train, or automobile to get to another store. I understand that. Yeah. Believe me, that, that that's... I'm not going to diminish the impact of that or the impact of the people that lost businesses or, or had property damage. But the whole idea that I think a lot of people are missing is that the last time there was a riot in Baltimore was like 47 years ago. And that's when Martin Luther King was assassinated. So mm. in that time, that, that 47 year uh, uh, span, there wasn't any riots. But what was going on? A lot of anger. Plenty of police brutality. No a rights. lot of anger, a lot of anger getting pent up by the people who live in those areas yeah. and nothing. And the thing is, what I don't understand about a lot of people, they get they get upset that people are reacting this way, but they have no other way to react. I mean, you could go the legal route, but then shit it. still. They did yeah, shit and they shit did doesn't get done. So the people are like, well, the kids were just like, you know what? Fuck it. You know, everybody's saying, let's do this kumbaya we shall overcome martial hand shit nah man let's let's show them that we're not afraid of them anymore the, i think the thing that also struck me is, is is very telling is the fact that the le- the level of outrage the level of outrage lauded towards these kids they were high school kids the right. level of outrage that was lauded against them i didn't see that level of outrage in the about adults the guy that got his neck broke I didn't, right. see, you know, I didn't like. I didn't. I didn't see this outrage. Like all of a sudden, people who didn't have an opinion on what the cops may or may not have done, or what happened to Freddie Gray, all of a sudden they got an opinion about these kids. And what I would right. say to, to to people is, you know, I got a chance to talk to some of these kids. I was I was on two shows um, from this um, time. I was on a show called The Place, and the other show I was on was on. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Shaka Pitts, who runs the Pit Fight Battle League in Baltimore. I was on his radio show, and he had kids on there that was that was involved or a part of that thing. You know, it would be a good idea to sit down and talk to them, to some of them, and see what their mindset was. Because what really predicated a lot of this is the fact that no one was listening. You're, right. you're not listening. And sometimes we have to listen. And And I got to say this, too. Before we point the finger at those kids, the finger needs to be pointed at the adults. Right. Because all of that shit that was happening in Baltimore for 47 years, 
The adults were supposed to be the ones taking care of that. The adults checked out of the political process. They right. Did not vote in in large numbers of in the city. What, what of, was what was what was the percentage of voters that you had said before was, that you told me? I think it was twenty one percent. I went and I checked the numbers horrible. and I got the 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 accurate numbers. Out of a out of a population of six hundred thousand people, only seventy five thousand people voted. Now wow. I want you to think about that for a minute. When you check out of the political system, you check out on how they um, spend the resources. You check right. out on whether or not people respect your opinion when it comes right. to social and local issues and stuff like that. When you do that and you check out of the system like that. You have totally said fuck it, and you've given it to people who yeah. are corrupt because they right. know you're not watching. So you know when the cat's away, the mice will fucking play, and yeah. that's exactly what happened. And it was and adults that didn't do what the fuck they. Were and you're to. and and they're also giving them the rights to treat our neighborhoods the way that they treat our neighborhoods. Yeah, well, I'm gonna tell you something. If you show a modicum of responsibility and respect for the neighborhood and the area that you have to live in, it goes more than just picking up trash. It's more than just that. It's also being politically active to make sure that things happen in that neighborhood right. the way they're supposed to happen and not just uh, the city responding to the wealthier neighborhoods, not just right. the city responding to the neighborhoods that have uh, affluence. And this right. is the problem. So before the adults, and I saw a lot of them come, and come down on them kids, talking shit on them kids. Before you do that, check yourself Self, and check right. to see if you, what were you what, doing? What if, yeah, what meantime? have you done? What did you do to try to stop it? What all did of you this? do? Nothing. And that's, and that's what just bugs me out the most because I'm not, I'm not mad at these kids. And I won't say I neither condemn or condone, but I definitely, definitely understand their rage and their right. anger. Because it's like, yo, it's still fucking happening and nobody's doing nothing about it. All we're doing is protesting and being peaceful, but they the police still fuck us up either way. I, so, but I will say this, you know, it, it's funny how those cops they did get um, charged, they got charged yeah. and they got arrested. And my 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 only question I ask the people is, if not for that little disturbance, would they have been charged? Now, no, oh. we you can say, oh, they might have, but we have past history to look at fairly recent history to look at where they aren't even charged they're right. not even charged there's only so, been one there's only been one account in um south carolina the thing that just recently happened right. when the guy got killed right. and um officer was charged but That's i think i know of. if anybody and in I, the audience knows of another um case of something similar to that where the cop was charged let us know because we don't want to pass on any misinformation but right. to my not to my knowledge or, or or remembrance of this that's the only one that i could think of in recent history where the cop was charged he was fucking charged for what he did and and again that a lot of that fault goes on the american people because it seems like unless something is violent and, and, and catchy that catch your eye Mm-hmm. You're not going to talk about that issue. Exactly. You're just protesting peacefully. You're not going to talk. Oh, exactly. It's, it's a case but of here but they go again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as, as soon as the people snap, oh, here they, oh, they brought it on right, themselves. Right. You know what I mean? But they're mad that another man got his fucking neck broke and got hurt in in custody of the police, and nobody did shit about it. You know, so that that's oh. all. That's all I really had to have to had to say on that. I think um I also wanna um like I said give a shout out to my friend uh Shaka Pitts. Um, and, and his and his um his lady, um Shinyer, because after this incident, really before they was doing a lot of stuff before this too, but they definitely took a um a leadership role to get, you know, people's voices out, to actually right. discuss things and put together action groups to decide to make what they're going to actually do. What's what's to be done now because like now that all the shit then took place, we if we if we sit back and crawl into our um little holes and and and, and little areas where of complacency where we no longer are doing anything about the situations on the ground, then we deserve what happened next. So Right. Big shout out to them for taking that leadership role and the others because it's been yeah. it's been quite a few people. But I gotta say, I really don't have a whole lot of love for people who wasn't involved in the first place 
and not even involved now, but you you are involved enough to point the finger right. at the kids. Like you, yeah. you point your finger at them, and I'm talking about the people that live there in the town. Yeah, you and I'm there in the town to point the fingers at them kids, and I'm looking at these adults with the side eye going, "Well, what the fuck was you doing for 47 years? Right, with the political structure in this town. Right, but you know that these kids have to deal with now because you guys were in you guys were inactive. I tell you so. what they were doing. They were sipping tea, talking about yep. that's none of my business though. They was doing a Kermit. But I also want to give you a shout out for getting on those shows and talking about it and also bringing it up on this show because I feel like these type of these type of issues they're very sensitive. Yeah, they are. And I feel like a lot of our listeners probably aren't from those type of neighborhoods. Right. Right. But for us and for you to want to shed light on these type of things, I think it's good for the podcast to show another side of us that we really care about cuz you know you you come from Baltimore, and I've always lived my life in you know urban neighborhoods and shit like that. So right. to to bring light to it, to let people know, like yo, this shit's been going like it's nothing new. It's this been going on. It's new. been going on for years. Like this I've been in instances new. where I've seen my homeboy get his ass beat by the police while I was illegally detained in the back seat of their car, and I watched it happen. And when I try to tell people about it, they're like, well, you guys probably did something yeah, to provoke them, blah, 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 blah. That's but at the end of the day, whether we provoke them or not, they still I have don't a think. Job to do. Exactly. They the way that they job. handle their job is the wrong way. You just don't beat people's ass just because they, they were a smart aleck or they did something you didn't like. You're supposed to have better composure than that if you're taking these type of jobs. And that's why I think it's important for us to talk about these type of issues in this podcast. And that's where I'm going to leave it. All right. So. Next on the list, um, the Draw Muhammad shooting in Texas. Right. Um, now, from my understanding, the whole Draw Muhammad thing, I've been on YouTube for a while now. And it was YouTube atheists that, that started that, that yeah. whole concept of Draw Muhammad because in certain sets of Islam, um, it is that follow a certain hadith, hadith it is considered, um, it's un, it's, it's considered sinful pictures are considered sinful or, or for whatever reason. So a lot of these extremists feel like they can just threaten people. Oh, if you do this, if you blaspheme our uh, prophet or our God, we'll fucking kill you. Now this right. is not by any means every single Muslim. They do not have that mentality. But right. we would be lying if we yep. would say that it is not a strong segment, but, but that's my but that's my problem though because they say, oh, but it's not all Muslims. But that's the but that's exactly the point, right? That there right. are some Muslims that take it to that extreme that think that they could take people's lives away just because they feel their beliefs are disrespected, right. and it's horseshit. Now let me tell yeah. you, okay. So the whole thing was, uh, um, these, these they they had, it was this event. Um, called the inaugural Muhammad Art Exhibit and Contest. They offered like ten thousand a ten thousand dollar prize for cartoons people drew of the Prophet Muhammad. Um, and you know depictions like I told you before they're considered blasphemous by many Muslims around the world. So the event was sponsored by the American Freedom Defense Initiative and attended by its president and co-founder Pamela Geller. Now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you guys. In the interest of full disclosure, I am not a fan of Pamela Geller. All right, I'm not a fan of that whole her 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 tactics. So she she in your eyes she's scum. In, in my eyes, she's hateful and she's just yeah scum. Like there's a certain segment uh, of people in this country that are just bigoted towards the other. Anything right. that's different or not the same that they, that they are. Even though, if you look at some of the things they may believe themselves, they're very similar to the things that the, the other that they are um, being bigoted towards believe in. But that being said, regardless of how I feel about her personally and about some of the rhetoric that came out of her mouth, the fact of the matter is, there is no excuse right. for somebody trying to shoot somebody because Over, they drew yeah. a fucking picture. Right. I don't care who they drew the picture of. It could be a picture of your mama. I don't give a fuck. All right? Pull because not, a gun. nothing Come at on, the end of the, at the end of the day, nothing is above scrutiny, okay? Nothing. And that's and that's what people need to understand cuz we live in this new liberal age where 
you can't say anything mean or do anything mean to people or or just say anything. And, and I feel like it's bullshit because I feel like a lot of liberals, they want to they they they're like, well, they were asking for it. You know, they 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 were making fun of people's religion. You're supposed to respect people's religion and beliefs. No, you fucking don't. You're no, supposed to respect you people it's funny for who they are. That. It's funny that you say that because. It's it's a contradiction because if you're not gonna say like I'm the first person to call somebody out if they say well the girl got raped because she was wearing something there is no excuse for you to no put excuse. your fucking hands on any woman just because exactly. of what she has on or or how late she's out or what t- what side of town she happened to be walking but it's, on but it's but it's just funny how they pick and choose when that applies exactly exactly and that that that's the thing that I, I find hypocritical there is no excuse so these uh these two American born, from what I'm reading, uh, Muslims, um, they, they they came down there and they started shooting. They didn't kill anybody, thankfully. Nobody, nobody oh, was killed. Good. The only people that was killed were them. The police oh, but... shot, took them, took them out. Straight mm. up, took them out. Um, but like I said, I'm trying to find the names. I think the guy, one of the guy name was uh, Elton Simpson. And the second suspect was Nadir Sufi. Uh, they were like uh, that was his. They were roommates or whatever. Um, right. They they yeah. The, the cops took them down. So it was good that, that nobody was killed other than and them. They, <laughs> and weren't they even weren't they even accused of um joining I guess like a African um uh, what's you call it uh, I think it's, it's, it's somewhere a terror group or some 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 terror, yeah some type of terrorist group in to, Africa or something. I don't know. No, I, yeah. Uh, I think they said the FBI did know who Simpson was, and he was convicted of lying to federal agents about I don't know five years ago about yeah, playing, yeah. Play, play, they tried, but I, it was funny how um, ISIS tried to take um, credit for it. Like, they, <laughs> yeah, oh, that was us. Yeah, that was yeah. You know, we was we was down. Whatever, you know. But yeah, man. Like, like, I think the point, the main point of this segment is to say that I don't give a fuck what somebody draws about you, about your fictitious God, about your 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 prophets. That's no excuse for somebody exactly. to gun out and shoot somebody. And the last thing we need to be doing is saying it was provoked. Cause yeah, that, we need to we need you're opening, to you opening an ugly door. Yeah, we're having a saying that. We're having apologies for atrocities. Yeah, you know what I mean? A, a ugly door. And you, we can't, we can't have that in this day and age. Because now, because if anything, now you're saying it's okay for people to do that because they were fucking provoked, right. quote yeah. unquote. See, to me, when you say provoke, provoke me, you hit me. All right, now, mm-hmm. now, now, I'm gonna put my foot so far up in your ass, you're gonna be tasting toe jam. For but, but you, but you were provoked I emotionally. Provoked some, some, somebody you know? hurt, somebody hurt your feelings. That that's that's no prov- that's provocation. I don't think so. Nah, it's no it's no excuse. You learn how to control your emotions. If and look, I'm not saying I'm perfect in that regard because, yeah, somebody can say and do things that would piss me off. That might move me to violent anger. So I'm not gonna put myself up as a a, a, a paragon of virtue in that regard. But right. yet, while I'm being lucid and talking about this shit now, like no, nah, you ain't allowed to do that. I'd be dead ass wrong every time. I'd be right. dead ass wrong. And that's what I'm saying. It just means they need to keep their feelings in check at the end of the day. Because if it's something that you believe, no matter what anybody says or makes fun of it, it shouldn't matter because that's your fucking belief. So that shows me how weak you are in your beliefs if I say something that gets you so mad that you want to take my head off. And here's an idea. Rather than you picking up a gun or a bat or a knife or an explosive, how about you engage me intellectually about right. that bullshit you say you believe in? Because if... It's as strong as you say, and there is so much evidence to support it. You shouldn't have any problems putting me in my place, because I'm right. just a mean old atheist that likes to get on people's nerves about whatever. So you shouldn't have no problem. I'm an ignorant oh, atheist. And, I don't know anything. And, and let's make it clear: the lady who started it wasn't an atheist. No, she was she, not an I, atheist. I, I, no, she wasn't an atheist. She's just a hateful conservative prick. That's it. But it is what it is. Um, she, even though I can't, I don't like her personally. That. Nah, there's no excuse for that. At so, all. So on a lighter note, we talked about some couple of heavy things here. But on a lighter note, didn't you uh, wanted to discuss something about some venereal disease you, uh, you 
Here, here, we, here, we, here we go no, again. You know, see, it was see now, 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 Tombstone, this is where it gets real. Hold up, we got to cut <laughs> off the mics. <laughs> now, um, again, you know, we always do the Herp. We, well, we started doing the Herptology segment about two um, podcasts ago. And this time I wanted to talk about how to take care of a Cresta Gecko because I have one and his name is Reptar. And, um, they're great pets to start off with if you are into herpetology or if you are a herper. And but the only thing is, um, you have to make sure you have the right type of habitat for them. With me, I have mulch on the ground so he can like move around and all that. Mm-hmm. And I also have a bunch of leaves and stuff for him to climb on because there there are there are boreal creatures, which means they like to climb and they like to stay up high. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing and. As far as feeding them, um, you could feed them crickets, but you have to get this, I think it's called VT3 vitamin for them, and you sprinkle it on the crickets, and then you put it in the cage with the, um, well, you're not actually supposed to put it in the cage. Well, you're not supposed to put it in the same habitat that the gecko's in. You're supposed to put it in, like, another um, cage and um, feed them like that because sometimes... Um, the crickets they get lost, and then they'll start biting the reptile, and the reptile could get an infection, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. But my reptile, he's not, he doesn't fuck with the crickets at all, like at all. So there's another alternative that's actually even better. It's called CGD. It's called the Crested Gecko Diet. Right. There's um a bunch of different brands. All you do is um you take because what I use to feed them, I use a cap, a bottle cap from a uh, milk carton and I put some of the powder in there and then you put a little bit of water and then you you swish it around till it looks like applesauce and then you put it in there for about a day or two clean it out redo it and they eat it and you can tell by the if they're eating it or not because there'll be like little little licks in the dish because they have like very very small stomachs so they don't really need to eat that much anyway and you also like what I did because because temperature actually matters also so what I did, I bought a gauge for him that shows um the tropical temperature and also like um the humidity because they have to be at least between seventy two and eighty two degrees. They can withstand sixty nine degrees, right. but that'll still be a little bit too cold for them because they're already cold blooded. So what I try to do, I try to keep it between seventy two and eighty two, and I always miss this cage because they're from Caledonia. I'm not exactly sure where that's at. But that's where um Isn't that on the West Coast? Mm-hmm. Oh, you uh, said Caledonia, not California. Yeah, Cali- okay. yeah, not California. Caledonia. Actually, and at one point they thought that they were extinct mm-hmm. until until two thousand five. So ah. and then when people found them, they started breeding them and now they're like, you know, they're back up to non extinction and whatnot. So like that's all I want to talk about, how to take care of a crested gecko. Okay. And make sure when you first get one, um just leave it in the cage that you got it for a few weeks, and it might not eat for like a month because crested geckos they hate change of habitat and they just hate change. Period. So they might not move around a lot, right. and they might not get acclimated as quickly as you would like. So just don't handle them. Just let them do what they do, and eventually they'll get they'll get acclimated. Um, fortunately for me, Reptar he got acclimated real quick. Like in about a week, he was eating. He oh, let nice. me handle him. Yeah, he was climbing around on the caves, climbing on the um the little sticks we made for him and everything. Nice. So I just wanted to give you guys a little heads up and a little information about crested geckos and how to take care of them. Awesome, so. awesome. I just have one question. That's all. One question because we're running a little long on this segment. Um, okay, what's that? Do they stink? Like, do they have a smell? Um, no. See, well, mine's doesn't because I clean his cage at least once a week. Ah, okay. So I do that. So to avoid any type of smell, I just clean his cage once a week. And also, you don't actually have to put him in the type of habitat that I put him in because he's like my show off gecko. What you could really do, you know, those um those bins that you get from Walmart, like those little trays that you put your clothes in and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can use one of those and put like sticks in them and just have um like paper towel at the bottom so you mm-hmm. can clean their clean their poop and whatever, and they'll still be good like that. So there's different um ways that you could take care of them or whatnot. Oh, okay. That's, so yeah. That's but yeah, no, he doesn't stink though. That's dope. I make sure of that. That that's dope. 
Um, yeah. So I think since we've ran long this segment, we may need to go and pay some bills. Yes, pay some bills. Pay some. Hey, Love Buds, it's Ayetta, and I'm here at the Laurel Day Festival. Going to check out some vendors here, get some good food. Matter of fact, if you turn around, like those chips are calling my name. With Sade from Emily's Bath and Body about the products they have here on Main Street. So, first question, Sade, who is Emily? Emily is my great. I'm here with Marvin of Bami Products, and I'm going to ask him a few questions about what he does for this company. So, Marvin, do you make the products here? Yes, I make most of the products. Okay, so how did you come up with the name by me? Well, it's an acronym. It's my mom, she's Bernadette, my sister's Alicia, I'm Marvin, and my younger brother's Denise. I'm here when you're looking for me. You can catch me every Monday giving you all you need. Like motivation, inspiration, all you need to succeed. Got what it takes to be a leader, just don't follow the lead. See, motivation's a tool. A tool? Motivation you need, need. Motivation for you, you and me, so we can be the best we can be. I need, I need, I need motivation. Yeah, indeed, indeed, I need motivation. Hey, I need, I need, I need motivation. Yo, indeed, indeed, I need motivation. Yeah, you need, you need, you need motivation. Hey, indeed, indeed, you need motivation. Yo, you need, you need, you need motivation. And we're back. This is one of our most exciting segments. <laughs> <laughs> Video fucking games. What games have you been playing lately, bro? Dude, you know I got Mortal Kombat. That was the last, oh. well, not quite the last new game, but the game before... Um, earlier this month when it came out well actually right. last month when it came out I got Mortal Kombat and dude I've been playing it like crazy is it badass? It is, is it what you expected? it is not only badass it is badass to the highest level ever oh um, god the story is a bit cheesy I won't lie but the things that you really want out of a fighting game it has all of that it's brutal um, you definitely need to learn the moves, but the moves aren't hard for you to pick up on. It's more about tactics when you're in a fight. You right. Know? Um, it, it, it has so much content in there that if you are a fighting game fan like I am, you're going to enjoy this game. It's, I mean, the brutality, the fatalities are bloody. Dude, it's just, it, it's, and it's, that's, that's what they've always been great at, though. You know, the brutality of it and yeah, oh, yeah. all, all, all and, the and gory they always, shit. They, they always try to, um, they always try to push outdo, the envelope. Yeah, outdo always outdo this. themselves. Yeah. Right. So now that the, you know, that the technology is there to represent these, uh, uh, these kills, <laughs> um, as realistic as almost possible. I mean, if you can say realistic, because some of them are just over the top, but yeah. just the level of, <laughs> blood and bone breaking and yeah i know that sounds kind of kind of messed up like to some people out there that oh but it's violent yeah but it's i, I love it's, it it's a glorious <laughs> type of violence yeah. it's the type of it's the type of violence that if i could take this violence and put it in a in a in a, in a picture i would hang it on the wall it's that type of right it's, that it's type beautiful. Of beautiful violence <laughs> <laughs> so who have you been playing with though who's your favorite okay, character so, i'm glad you asked that because for me my favorite characters have not changed since the very first game. I love to play Raiden. Mm -hmm. Play as Raiden, excuse me, because he's a Thunder God. And you know, I get I get down with the Thunder Gods. Hell yeah. No matter what Pantheon, if they bring in the lightning and the thunder, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out with him. Um, right. Kano, because Kano is a bastard, and I used to piss people off with Kano back in the day. And Jax. Oh yeah, Jax. Jax is a beast. Jax the one with the punishing he, with, with, with the metal hands, right? Dude, he puts those hands on oh, you. Man. Like like my son, I'll give you a classic example. It had been a little while since I had played Mortal Kombat, and then we went and got the game. Okay? So my son, who is famous for running his mouth, <laughs> running his mouth, he says, You don't want to see me in Mortal Kombat. You yeah, don't want to see me in Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. <laughs> now, mind you, 
he's been saying that his whole life about what he's going to do to me mm-hmm. in any of these fighting games. And usually what winds up happening is, if I hadn't played for a while, he has about maybe a five between five and eight game head start where he's going to get wins before I catch up. Right. When I start catching up, oh, it's, oh, it's a risk. Oh, 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 oh <laughs> man, paper or plastic, sir? <laughs> dude, dude, I've told him time and time again. He'd rather run through a bear's den with honey dripping off his sweet ass than challenge me in any of these fucking fight games. These fight games that's is where I live and breathe now. That's not to say that there aren't people out here that wouldn't put hands and feet on me in these games. But that is to say that I'm a natural at this shit. Yeah, you fuck with it. That's what you do. I'm a natural at it. And and um, just want to put this out there because I was supposed to play this guy and we just haven't had a chance to catch up. Jamon. Jamon. You're on my friends list on the PlayStation 4, I believe. We are friended on that. And you mm. did send me a message. About I remember that message. I remember but, that. Yeah, but... At the time when he sent the notification, I wasn't able to do it at that time because wifey was watching Netflix, blah, blah, blah. It was one of those type of things. Jamon, at any point in time during the course of the day, because I think he lives on the other side of the country. He lives on your side of the country. So our time is different or whatever. But we can set it up. We can get it on. Since so we basically- can't seem to get along, we going to need to get it on. So basically, what he's saying, Jamon, is when you're ready to get that ass drag, it's on. <laughs> yeah. So what have you hey, been playing up? Like, what have you? Been um. Well, we recently got Budokai Three because I used to play that shit a lot back at the crib when my cousin used to live with me, and um, that's all we've been doing. Like me and Nessa, we be fucking kicking ass in this game, so man. Like, like whoa, whoa, whoa. explain to them to those who don't know what is Budokai. Oh, Budokai 3, that's Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Z shit. And the game is so fucking amazing. Like, it just it's just too much shit that you could do. You know, like all their power-ups, their special moves and all that. And it's easy to use, like user-friendly and shit. Like, there's, 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 there's this one thing that you could do. You could kick somebody through a, um, through a, a mountain, right? Mm-hmm. And then you go to the other side of the mountain that they're on, and you kick them back to the side that y'all were fighting at. Nice. And start whooping their ass. Then nice. there's another one. You kick them through a mountain where they're where they where they fall and they're in front of a um like some type of dinosaur or some shit. And the dinosaur is trying to bite them, but they dodge it. And then the dinosaur turns around with the tail and hits them with the tail and, and like hits them back to where you're at. So you then you could keep fucking them up. Right. But what I like to do, my favorite move so far is um, go because I love Goku. Goku, even though he's a fucking moron, he he be <laughs> kicking ass. Like really, he's a moron. Like he be saying corny ass shit. But I like to use um, what's it called? Um, damn, what's the move called? It's called the damn. What's it called, babe? All right. So what it basically what he does? Is he, he just I forgot the name of the actual of the move. move. Right. Yeah, but he like he takes like all the energy of Namek, and mm-hmm. he takes it all, and he like fucks you up with it. You know what I mean? So wait a minute, is, that, then, is this the oh, it's called bomb? It's Spirit Bomb and Dragon Fist. That's what ah, it is. Okay, that's right. what I be using a lot, and I be fucking people up with that shit. Dude. And then then I finally unlock Brawly, and Brawly he's a fucking beast. Like he's like the Super Saiyan of Super Saiyans. And I learned how to do the um, I think it's called like a Meteor Strike or some shit. Yeah. And when I say it's a meteor strike, like what they do after you after you um you make the hit, they zoom out to where you see the earth and you see the impact of the meteor. Right. Of the meteorite hitting that shit. That shit is fucking amazing, bro. Amazing. Wow. I, I think my son he plays that too. Um he plays it on the of course PS4. But um yeah, he was he's definitely into that too. He like when it first when he first got it. That's all he pretty much did. Um, he didn't mess with the with uh, GTA. He didn't mess with DC Universe. He basically just played that for the longest time. I think he didn't. Um, he didn't kind of got you know a little bit drained from it 
now. Yeah. So I don't see him playing it as much. But yeah, he, he was definitely he was definitely on it. And I know that's something my nephew was really into. Um and and that's that's the funny thing because um I, I got I have I finally got GTA five for um PC and I played it like I pre played it for PS three mm-hmm. and um PC that shit is like I'm sorry. People that are console gamers might be just say shit like, oh, because you get greener grass or whatever, but that shit looks <laughs> <laughs> that shit looks amazing, yo. Did you say greener like, grass is that yeah. is that they saying that that's yeah, the oh, they, you know. Mm, yeah, you had to wait a year, blah blah blah. But it was well worth it. Cause shit, like, oh man, I love that fucking game. Cause I haven't played it as much recently because mm. I've been playing on Budokai Vanessa because we like to play games that, you know, we could both play together or whatnot. Right, right, right. So we've been months on Budokai, but GTA V um, for PC is a fucking beast of a game, man. Like, yo. And, it's, uh, funny, and like, it's funny that you, that you said you hadn't played for a while because, like, today was the first day in a long time where I, I played it because I was heavily on DCU, Mortal Kombat, and um, Shadows of Mordor. But today I got to play with my brother Napalm. Shout out to Napalm. Um, and do, you know, missions with him on GTA 5 on the PS4. And dude, it was some of the funnest shit yeah. ever. Yeah, well, I, I like the I like the ones because I played with JS. I like the ones where you know it's like gangs versus gangs and shit. Yeah, but and I, and I and I won't lie, like since I'm a noob to online gaming, like with other people and shit. Mm-hmm. I get fucked up, like, yeah. <laughs> like all I could do is like duck and try to find vests or like, like try to sneak in and pick people off the best I can. But that should be fun as hell, though. Man, it, like that's another game that I just have seemed to have natural instinct for, um, like because it's that's one thing I like about open world games like that. Yeah. Because it's open world, man. Like you can think outside of the box to solve solutions. You, right, you solve problems. right. You, you ain't got to do the same thing over and over. Yeah, I, it's different ways you can approach a problem on this game other than the straight up running gun or right. or whatever. Like no, nah, and and I utilize my entire environment when I play that game. So even though my character um, entropy is not full powered, like his level is still low. I think I'm up to a level. Eight about to be nine, and Palm is at forty something. Damn, I think forty eight. Even though he's higher, he's helping me like level up. I still have instincts to be helpful in the game. I just got to build right. my um my stats up and yeah. get more of that money and more guns, money, Man. money, more money, more money. <laughs> what we need to do is you, me, Palm, and Jay. We need to get on that shit. We need to get Palm into PC gaming. We have yeah, to. Yeah, we d- we definitely do because I'm going to get the um, GTA Five for the PC because me, I'm both. I'm like, like, I play console games. Yeah. Because because it, it serves a different purpose for me. Right, right. It's easy to pick up. You just put the thing in and you start playing. It's not a whole lot of stuff I have to do. But I also like the PC games because I got put onto those through actually DC Universe Online because I first yep. I, I played the beta for that game. It was on the computer. It wasn't on the PS3 or whatever. No, it was on the computer. So, yeah. It, it was actually you that got me into PC gaming. And then JS got us more into PC gaming yeah, when it came buddy. to Skyrim. So, I'm like, yeah, I, I fuck with PC gaming. Absolutely. And, and, and plus, there's a lot of, like, free PC games out there that are, like, pretty dope. So, like, right. I don't understand the whole beef culture between console gamers and PC gamers. Man, I think there's, fuck I think that. there's, I think there's a lot of douchebaggery on both sides. Yeah, like, I'm just, yeah. I'm just a tough person. I'm like, gamer, if you like what you play, play right? you like what you play. You know what I mean? Like, like fuck, play, I don't man. care about all that other oh, extra shit. I don't give a fuck. So what was the other, um, the new one that's coming out oh, there? Um, yeah, new Batman dude. you wanted to talk about? Dude, I reserved, uh, couple of weeks ago actually dark knight arkham knight um, see this 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 is my problem with you this is why <laughs> i have issues with you because you always pre-ordering always have it ready beforehand now see let me tell you man look when it comes to games like this and i mean for the most part it's probably a lot of games nowadays because of the way the whole gaming industry is but man, look, they got mad downloadable content, and sometimes I want to get that shit before most people do. 
I don't want to sit around and wait for them to decide they're going to release it such and such for the general pop. No, right. if I can get, if I can put some money down on it or pay it off upright, I ain't got to worry about it. And then, you know what? I don't have to worry about forgetting that, right. that the game, oh shit, the game came out three days ago. I should have been, went and got it. No, nah, like I got reserved. They, you know, give, send you notifications when it's out. They call your phone or they send you an email or whatever. And I go and pick the shit up and it's already paid for. Like that's that's how right. I'm living. And this game looks solid. Like to me, all of the um the um Arkham games have been solid. Yeah, I had um Arkham Asylum and that shit was fucking dope as hell. Yeah, like I, dope, I I played that game until I beat it. Like I didn't play anything else. Yeah, and you know, it's very rare. I played a lot of Batman games over the years. Um, but it's very rare in a game where you actually feel like Batman. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you feel like like, I feel like I am the knight. I feel like I should be standing on top of a rooftop going, the city needs me. Like, yeah. I feel- <laughs> Speak, Speaking of that, I think I might throw in Arkham Asylum after we get off this podcast. Because I actually really, really love that fucking game. I didn't know a bad game, a Batman game was that dope. But not only that, the, I think the best part about the new Batman game is that you get to drive the Batmobile. Yes, the they've Batmobile. been they've been needed to implement that because oh, yeah. that is fucking badass. Now yo. I'm gonna throw something out here because when it comes to video games and a lot of stuff, I'm a futurist, and right. I'm I'm just gonna say that what needs to happen, and I don't know when they're gonna be able to do it as far as technology to get it done. What needs to happen is we I want a complete Batman game. What I mean by that is Batman is more than just a kick ass artist where he just puts his foot on criminals' asses. And kicks it all day, all around Gotham. He's more than right. that. He's also a detective. Now, they do have detective elements in these games, too. But I want to do the full Batman experience, which would be for me to have the Bat Cave, to have a Bat Computer. You would collect right. clues. You would go and examine. I want to do the whole nine. And I know, I know you guys can do this. I don't know if they can accomplish this on the console but I'll take it on PC. You know what I'm saying? But I I'll know take it either way. I, just, I want a full fledged, just a Batman fucking experience. And right. I'm pretty sure they can do that shit. So get on it. Get on it now. Tomorrow. Yesterday. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> get on it. Shit. So we're going to close this segment up. Yeah, you got to pay some pay, more bills. Pay some bills. All righty then. We'll see y'all when we get back, man. Yep. Can you say why America is the greatest country in the world? Why is America not the greatest, greatest country in the world, Professor? That's my answer. Well, just in case you accidentally wander into a voting booth one day, there's some things you should know. And one of them is, there is absolutely no evidence to support the statement that we're the greatest country in the world. We're seventh in literacy, 27th in math, 22nd in science, 49th in life expectancy, 178th in infant mortality, third in median household income, number four in labor force, and number four in exports. We lead the world in only three categories. Number of incarcerated citizens per capita, number of adults who believe angels are real, and defense spending, where we spend more than the next 26 countries combined, 25 of whom are allies. Now, none of this is the fault of a 20-year-old college student, but you nonetheless are, without a doubt, a member of the worst period, generation period ever, period. So when you ask what makes us the greatest country in the world, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I wonder if the Romans saw the empire decline And was the ones that said it's coming ridiculed, accused of lying Called malcontested, only specialized in whining Losers who were mad at the citizens that was climbing Is that the way they rationalize the country that's crumbling With flag-waving, nationalistic, chest-thumping And did they throw parades to say that they were number one Instead of fighting the malaise that gave a hint that they were done Were they discussing corruption of people in authorities Pulled to them to really cope with ever-growing enemies Unemployment rampant with a failing infrastructure See, I wonder if these things became the way the it's hard for me to see the shit and just ignore the parallels But everybody parties hard, the model being what, what the, the hell? hell? Will others see the trend before it's too late? Or will the realization come with barbarians at the gate? Don't get mad at me cause I'm the one to shell and fire Now is the gasoline that keeps the flames higher Ignore it if you want to be a slave to your desire But this is what it looks like if the devil came higher Don't get mad at me cause I'm the one to shell and fire Now is the gasoline that keeps the flames higher Ignore it if you want to be a slave to your desire But this is what 
for the beast like at the death of the empire Hundred million Americans are mostly seen as arrogant The globe could be on fire and they scarcely be aware of it At least that's the impression the rest of the world is given But what's truly nauseating is I cannot argue with it Too many caught up in their first world problems inside their first world bubble Their comfort level blinds their minds to the trouble That their government will get into and do it in our names Cause nobody's held responsible so they just took the reins How could 90% of Americans want gun control Universal background checks and they just say no Like fuck how you feel cause we don't have to listen But the NSA will monitor the emails you have written To see the crimes that you're admitting Like confessions you're submitting In the process of this fuck of reading Constitution written Oh by the way you're paying us to disregard your problems It's ironic that the problem's us So no one else will solve them Don't get mad at me cause I'm the one to shell and fire Now is the gasoline that keeps the flames higher Ignore it if you wanna be a slave to your desire But this is what it gets like at the death of the empires Don't get mad at me cause I'm the one to shell and fire Now is the gasoline that keeps the flames higher Ignore it if you wanna be a slave to your desire But this is what it gets like at the death of the empires Nowadays these conspiracies are easy to believe Because the collective consciousness perceives the government to see And no matter just how ridiculous a lot of them will seem The population will spread it around with statuses and memes There's a general disgust about things that they don't, don't trust When the media ain't leaking some topics they won't touch, but our attention spans diverted. We, we got, got ADD. While those in power seek to redefine what liberty means. Yo, the people on the top can give a crap about the bottom. All the access, all, all the, the money, money, all the resources they got them. And you part your lips to talk about what man won't vote. vote. They laughing at you drinking champagne when they luxury vote. Cause every empire ever existed has fallen to dust. And it's kind of ludicrous to think that the exception is us. But laugh me off and watch us lost in the exact same road. And years from now, this empire will be another story told. Don't get mad at me, cause I'm the one to shell and fire. fire. Now is the gasoline that keeps the flames higher Ignore it if you wanna be a slave to your desire But this is what it gets like at the death of empires Don't get mad at me cause I'm the one that's yelling fire Now is the gasoline that keeps the flames higher Ignore it if you wanna be a slave to your desire But this is what it gets like at the death of empires Don't get mad at me cause I'm the one that's yelling fire Now is the gasoline that keeps the flames higher Ignore it if you wanna be a slave to your desire But this is what it gets like at the death of empires I don't normally do this, but the other day I was listening to the radio, flipping through the stations, you know, trying to find something to listen to. So finally got to the station, I'm like, yo, what is these niggas rapping about? You know what I'm saying? I know I can't be the only yeah. I can easily paint a picture of throwing 20s at girls in the club while drinking champagne and bitches showing up. I can easily play the thug that's say they're out of jail selling drugs. I'm scared of pop slugs and maintains his liquor. But that's predictable, the opposite of lyrical. Visuals get presented with the grammar skills of middle school. They say I ridicule the shit I'm about to kick to you. It's how I'm real particular with the music I listen to. I don't care if you're from the southwest or east coast. As long as when you spit in the booth, you get in beast mode. And make sure you speak the truth and not see no Plus always say pride in your lyrics and stay on beat, yo I pick up my pen, then I ride on my pad I rhyme expressing myself, I give the good and the bad So when I get in the booth, and I open my mouth Nobody ever has to wonder what I'm rapping about I pick up my pen, then I ride on my pad Then I express myself, I give the good and the bad So when I get in the booth, and I open my mouth Nobody ever has to wonder what I'm rapping about I can easily talk love and have a chick singing the chorus about his ups and downs and how I beat it up. I can even brag of cars and how I leave people in awe with my sound system while I'm rolling on 20 inches. But that's been said before, I strive for creativity. The thoughts that invade my mind, I express it to you lyrically. Articulate these syllables to make sure that you're hearing me accordingly. To get my point across, it's my priority. I'm not saying my dialect's superiority. I actually think of my style as a minority, like atheists. Blacks in America, right. I'm all of the above to do the map, dog, and, and add it up. I can easily be the rapper that is bad or tough. I claim to be the best rapper alive, like that's enough. Don't like what I'm saying, like safe sex, I wrap it up and get back to the chorus in this verse so you can back this up. I pick up my pen, then I ride on my pad. I rhyme expressing myself, I give the good and the bad. So when I get in the booth, and I open my mouth, nobody ever has to wonder what I'm rapping about. I pick up my pen, then I ride on my pad. I express it myself, I give the good and the bad So okay. when I get in the booth, and I open my mouth Nobody ever has to wonder what I'm rapping about 
can make metaphors uh -huh. About how my ice is so cold It can make the climate synonymous to Pluto I can even spread lies, lies. And say that creationism is actual science Even though I know that it's Pluto I spit factual uh -huh. on subjects that are actually yeah. Clitorified by proof what you thought it was unimaginable yeah. And this music to me is very therapeutic But can be easily destroyed Depending how we use it So don't be foolish And leave your audience clueless To the point that they're not even interested in your new shit I'm not reclusive, I want everyone to dig my flow yeah. And get involved with my music, the more that I grow right. Whether you do this for the love or just for the dough Be sure your thoughts get across and are understandable yeah. So when you get in the booth and open your mouth Nobody has to wonder what you're rapping about yeah. I pick up my pen, and then I write on my pad uh -huh. I'm expressing myself, and I give the good and the bad right. So when I get in the booth, and, and I open my mouth Nobody ever has to wonder what I'm rapping about yeah. I pick up my pen, uh -huh. and then I write on my and then I'm expressing myself, I give the good and the bad So when I get in the booth, and I open my mouth Nobody ever has to wonder what I'm rapping about We are back, and you know what time it is What time is it? It's comic book time Oh, yeah. And there, believe me, there are a plethora. That's right. Plethora. Plethora. He's bringing out the dictionary <laughs> word. Of, plethora. Of comic book subject that I would like to discuss. Let's get into it. All right. Well, first, for those of you that are paying attention, and maybe for those of you that aren't, Marvel is, has done a complete restructuring of their universe. Now, it started a little while ago through some of their earlier titles, like the Avengers, and you saw a bit of it, I guess, in um, Spider-Man, too. Small amount of it in Spider-Man. But basically what's going on is all of the abuses of the space-time continuum, from constant time travel and all kinds of other things, has kind of weakened the boundaries between universes, and universes were being destroyed. They were being destroyed. Um... This book that they just released not too long ago called Secret Wars, the first one in that, it shows what happens when all the other universes have been destroyed. And it was just two universes left. It was Marvel 616, which most of you know is the regular timeline, and Marvel, 16, Marvel Universe 1610, which is the Ultimate Universe now. Ultimate Universe has been around for a little while now, so it has a, lot, a bunch of fans. Those of you that know, um, that's the same universe that Miles Morales is Spider-Man, because right. Peter Parker died in that universe. These two universes clashed, mm. and the heroes from that universe fought the heroes from 616 universe, and it was epic. Everything about the story was epic. People was catching them hands. Mm. Like, it was just epic, and it, was, it had a sense of finality mm. to it, yet, towards the end, you see it, it's nothing final. This is really the beginning of things. Plenty right. of heroes lost their lives. Um, I think only around six survived out of all of the Marvel characters from 616. Six of them survived. Of course, a representation of my favorite character survived. Uh, Thor. Thor. Yeah, she survived. <laughs> is, is Angela in it? Uh, Angela's dead. She's dead? All of them are dead. I told you only six people survived, man. Damn. Yeah, look, man, look. So her series is over. Well, well, just for, for um, Secret Wars. Yeah, War. for Secret so. Wars, they're gonna do Secret Wars Battlefield. And okay. This is gonna you're gonna basically see damn near every version of almost every uh, Marvel universe that we know about, like the Age of Apocalypse. Those characters. Right. Um, some I'm, I'm sure some of the what if characters will be involved in that. You're going to have, like, so many different versions of Thor. Basically, it's the Thor core, but I think it's a little bit more in-depth this time than what it was last time. But So, hold on. So, what's, so what's Thor survive? The um the, the female one or the male one? Um, The female one. She uh, survived. She survived. No. Um, and um, I, it was just a, it was a dope-ass story, man. You got to read it. I'm going to um, put a link in the description box to this website where you can read it online. It was just super, super fucking dope, and I really cannot wait for the second part. I, I yeah, can't wait for and, it. 
and you sent it to me. I was supposed to read it so we could get more in depth about it. But my bad for not reading it because I don't want any spoilers look, too anyway. But but it looked freaking awesome because I saw the cover. I was like, oh my goodness, this shit looks like it's going down. Didn't you say it was about um forty pages long? Forty pages of per epic. Awesome. Per epic, so um, also Marvel released, of course, since in between the time we had the last podcast, the Daredevil series. And you've been watching that, haven't you? my goodness. That show is freaking amazing. Nessa's been watching it with me a little bit here and there, and even she fucking thinks that show is fucking great. Awesome. And she she hasn't, she's seen a little bit from the beginning, but she hasn't seen, like, most of the episodes, because I'm, like, I'm near the end. I'm on the last episode. I just have to watch it. Mm Mm-hmm. But that show, I don't care what anybody has to say about it. That show was freaking awesome, from the plot to the scheme to what everything's going on yes. to the characters yep. to who they pick to play the characters mm-hmm. is a great is a great fucking show. And I advise all you guys if you have Netflix or if you can find it on any other um, website online, check that shit out because it'll blow your mind. It's dope. It definitely blew mine. It's definitely dope. Um, I sat there and binged watched it um, and got all 13 episodes in. And that last episode is definitely a cool ass payoff. Oh, man. Um, and they're going to do another season. Can't wait for that. And Marvel's just kicking ass um, in a lot of different arenas. Uh, yeah. Speaking of that, you know, they Avengers Age of Ultron was released the other week. And. I went to see it. I gotta say, I really liked it. Um, awesome. I didn't like it as much as the first, but f- it was for different reasons. Um, uh, I feel like they this one is just chock full of things that's gonna lead you to the other movies. Okay. You know, things that connect that connect the the movies that are going to come out in the next coming years, and it's fucking it, it, it's awesome, man. And more to the point, being being the selfish bastard that I am, my boy looked great in there. You know, Thor, uh, Thor was kicking ass in there. You know, Thor always is kicking ass though. Yeah, but you know, he had his moments, like in the first movie. Um, he was kicking ass, but you know, he also got that sneak punch. Uh, Hulk gets that sneak punch on him. Yeah, you know, yeah. That, that's that's a classic scene. Like like people loved it. As soon as I remember being in the movie theaters. When that when that jumped off and and just saw the reaction of the crowd, it was funny. Like whoa! Right. Like, <laughs> in this movie, nah, Thor Thor is definitely he's handling his business. Pretty much but, everybody handles their business. But not but not to bad trap. But speaking of people who get drugged, um, Daredevil gets his ass drugged so fucking much. <laughs> like, and but he always gets out of it though. But he does get his fair share of ass whoopings and you know what i think that's cool because like it's it, it has a sense of realism to it like you're not going to go into a fight against five to eight people and right. not come out scarred even uh, even if you're great you're going to come out scarred somebody's going to get some punches off on you're going to you're going to feel it i'm gonna just say one thing though the one time he got drugged and i i know i don't know you remember this one and i'm not going to say who did it but it's when they were in the warehouse. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not 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 the ninja. I know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh my goodness! Like, that like ass beat. hands and feet all over him, <laughs> bro. Like he was a. It, it's like the nigga was hitting a pillow. You know what I mean? <laughs> Having a tantrum, and he, he was just taking ass. him. Oh God! He beat that ass. But that 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 show is <laughs> fucked. I'm so, I'm sorry. I know you're talking about Avengers, but I I just can't get over that show because I didn't think that the type of person I am, like I would be into it so much. Well, you know what I mean? What's good about the show too is you know it is connected to the overall Marvel Cinematic Universe. So right, it, it, you know they even mentioned the bat the big battle from the first Avengers movie is mentioned in there. Um, as a matter of fact, it's the reason that Hell's Kitchen is so messed up because right. it caused a power vacuum through all that destruction. And new gangsters came in, took over, and, and basically they all of them f- fighting and vying for uh, supremacy yeah. in that little area right there. It's, it, it, dude, it's 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 a really great show. Um, and like I said, the Avengers movie was good. I even went, well, I took the entire family. We even I even went and interviewed people at the uh, at the movie theater for the Reaper Nation Network. So um, 
Like, you guys, you really, I think you're really going to like it. Those of you who haven't seen the movie, I think you're going to like it, man. I really do. Like, it, don't don't go in there expecting it to be exactly like the first one because it's not. But there's plenty of stuff in there to like. Plenty nice. of stuff. Nice. So you want to go into the segment where you show them the, um, the little interviews you did? Yeah, that can be on the um, yeah. We do it on this next commercial when we pay the bills. So um, yeah, so let's pay them bills. Guys on the other side, all right? Peace, peace. Greetings, Reapers. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Mine was excellent because, as I'm sure most of you already know, this was the opening weekend for the Avengers: Age of Ultron. Greetings, Reapers. As you can see, I'm outside of the AMC movie theater. Going to interview a couple of people about the Avengers movie. Come on. Pretty sure you guys are here to see the Avengers, right? Um, have you enjoyed the other Marvel movies? Hey everyone, Adequa here, and I have a confession to make. I'm a herper. You have herpes? No, I said herper. For those who don't know what a herper is, I'll explain it to you. A herper is someone who has a fascination with reptiles and amphibians. Herpetology is the branch of zoology that deals with reptiles and amphibians. A herpetologist is a zoologist that studies reptiles and amphibians. The word herpetology is Greek, herpton meaning creeping animal, logia meaning novice. Newts and salamanders are uridios, frogs and toads are and urines, and Sicilians are worm-like genophionis. There are four reptile orders in existence today. Crocodilia refers to animals like crocodiles and alligators. Squamata refers to lizards. So we decided to do the last segment a little different this time. Um, we're going to blend the Ask and Indy segment into the tech and science segment because, at least on this episode, it kind of fits. Right. So um, I agree. You, sir, did a yes. whole bunch of upgrading to your uh, whole situation over there. Oh, yes. Yes. You know, over here, we're always looking into upgrading whenever we get the chance to. And um, recently, um, I actually made a video about it. And recently, because our whole setup, it was too compact. You know, we didn't have enough space and it felt like we were recording out of a storage, you know. So what we did, um, we, we bought a bigger desk. It's like one of those L-shaped desks. Right, and we also got a 32 inch screen TV, so we could hook up our computer, our computers, to the um, to the TV. Right, and that's working out beautifully because now it's like when I'm mixing or recording, like I don't have to just look down at my computer. I could just look up at the screen and you know manipulate things a lot better and a lot more precise or whatnot. Right. And then I also got a few more other toys that I've been playing with a little bit. I got a a Kai MPD, I know a Kai MPK Mini, and I also got a a Kai MPD eighteen. And for those of you that don't know what that is, those are beat machines. So what you do, you hook them up to your computer and you sync them with fru- with Fruity Loops. So that way, instead of you um, plugging in the beats with your mouse, you can actually record the beats that you're doing with those hardwares. So that's pretty cool. Dope. Yeah. Those, those were uh, rather expensive, were they not? Um, yeah, they were. They were rather. Well, the, the MPKs, they were about like $89, $90 a piece. Mm-hmm. So that's that came up. Not so, too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. You know, you go on Amazon, you know. They have great fucking deals, so that's what we did. And as far as the... Oh, and I also got some new speakers because my damn cat broke the import that goes to the inbox for wow. the... Um, yeah, <laughs> yep. For the MP... Um, for the M Audio 30s that I had. So then we got some M um, Audio 40s, and those, they beat out loud, and those are about 80 bucks. Nice. So that's... So putting all that together, probably like around like 300 and then the TV, we went to a um, we went to a pawn shop, and they said, "Yo, if you give us one sixty eight, no, you can have it." So we was like, "Shit, we'll take that." 
Because right. if you go to Walmart or something, it'll be like 232 or 300 or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we sure. got us a little deal. I mean, it's an older TV, but it works well. It gives us no problems yet. It has HDMI cords and ports and all that. So, nice. nice. You know, and I even got my PlayStation hooked up to it, too. So it's, it's a very... It's very like I wake up every morning going into waking up saying I'm going to the studio. You know what I mean? Right. Feeling like, okay, I'm going to do something productive. So that's why I think it's good to do upgrades, too, because it gives you motivation and something to look forward to in the morning. And I suggest all you guys that are um, into music or if you're artists, beat makers, whatever, rappers, whatever, you know, put some money aside or whenever you get some money, you know, upgrade. Right. Because. That'll make your sound quality better. That'll give you motivations to do more. And, yeah, basically just upgrade. Yeah, man, I feel you. Like, me, my whole tech experience for the last month or so has been a mixed bag of bullshit and some cool stuff. I landed on my feet. Definitely landed on my feet. But the process to get there was absolutely ass. Right, yeah, so you were going you were going through it, bro. I was going through it because basically I was having all kinds of computer issues. I went through three computers <laughs> in about two months. Um Damn. yeah, I just kept having these problems and couldn't I would fix one thing and then something else would go up and it I was fit to be tired for a while because when my shit is down, I feel useless. Right. Because my whole operation is built upon this tech. The computers, um, my, my controllers, my monitors, the software, my whole business operation is wrapped right. into that. My whole creativity is expressed through this. So when it's down, I am not a happy camper. I feel uh, you. Not at all. But like I said, I managed to land on my feet and I managed to get got a, got a brand new computer. It's better. It's not, um, it's not. The extreme top of the line, it's like an i5, you know, uh, full processors. It's, you know, it's quad core. It's not bad. i5 is bad. It's not bad at all. No, you know, it's not an i7, which I would prefer, yeah. but, you know, I'm taking steps. I'm going to get there because I'm tired of people having these monster computers that can do every damn thing, play the video games at the highest resolution, run right. all of the software, and launch nuclear weapons all from their desktop. <laughs> I'm tired but I, of everybody but I think- having that shit. But I think Except that's the problem. But I think that's the problem with most people because they think that. Because that's the problem I had. I thought that I had to have all everything right then and there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, it's all a process, and that's all people need to understand. You know, it does take time to build up your setup. Because I remember starting off with um, a meteor mic and uh, just a regular pc and using audacity for my first couple of albums right right you know well for my awkward silence and my and listen project right and then i was like matter of fact it was you and jb you guys were like you should step up your mic game i was like damn but i ain't got the money we i don't know if we could do it but then i said you know what fuck it it's an it's an investment and it's going to make my sound quality a lot better you know even with us doing even with us doing this podcast, you know, you can hear the sound quality through our mics because, you know, we took the time and say, you know what, instead of buying those new pair of Jordans, <laughs> let me let me get a mic. You know, right, instead of exactly, buying exactly. instead of buying that, you know, that new iPhone, let me get a mic because right. these are all things that we need to do to be creative. Because how I feel, if you're a creative person, you have to always be creating or you won't be happy. Right. And I also, to add on to... The stuff that I got, um, it was just miscellaneous stuff. I got a Spider-Man headlight, like lamp. <laughs> I had to get that. It's freaking awesome. I don't know that you had to get that, but okay. I no, I had to get that. You know, <laughs> you know, Spidey's my man, and it turns on, so it's like well, awesome. The, the lamp should turn on. If you bought that lamp and it didn't turn on, I'm getting my money back. I'm yeah, going straight to Walmart, <laughs> straight up. And we also got a few posters. We got a Deadpool poster, a Marvel poster. Wonder Woman, Guardian of the Galaxy, Spider Man Two, and we also had to get the Supernatural poster. Yeah, because you know sure. we're Supernatural heads, and I got a poster of um one of my favorite artists, Eminem. We're, we want to get more um posters of artists that we love, but we're going to do that um some other time when we get the chance. But 
but it's just to have the feel that it feels real now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't feel like we're just in some rinky dink studio trying to do some shit. Like it, it feels real. Then I just, like I said, I advise the rest of you guys, uh, you know, just invest in your craft. Yeah, That's man. it. And speaking of that, um, it, it, there's just, it's just so much going on as far as the stuff that I'm trying to expand with. I would not be able to do without, um, this, this new technology now. Um, right. I'm putting together this whole Reaper Nation network, and it's going to be another channel. Um, but the content on this channel is going to encompass everything about the culture that I've been building for the past year and a half. Um, and it, it's it's, it's going to be cool because, like, I've for those of you that have uh, subscribed to my channel, you know I've been putting a bit of the content here on the Rational Warrior channel. But I want to put it on the channel all its own so it can be full, fully devoted to that, to right. comic books, to video games, to um, breaking new music artists, interviewing music artists, to science and technology, uh, going into um, museums, natural history museums and science museums, and being on location and, and shooting uh, video, yeah. um, talking to people and just getting out there more. Because I want that type of entertainment value on another right. channel, so I can keep this channel for what you guys really got to know me for, and that was me ranting and 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 telling you my feelings on you know the religious impact that what's which I think is a good thing because what you're doing you're expanding and you're showing people that you're you're not just a rapper you know there's more about you and you want to show that to people and I think. I'm a fan of your music and I'm a fan of what you do. And I think we all appreciate the hard work that you put in when it comes to that, because a lot of, because a lot of people aren't doing it. And the fact that you are, you know, it, it shows that you're not just doing it just to say you're doing it. Like you, you have a goal and you have a, you have a mission. And right yeah. now I see you, you're, you're accomplishing that mission. And well, it's just you know, I always tell myself when, even after you've accomplished one goal, there's 15 more you haven't done yet. So it's all, it right. always keeps me um, busy and grounded and my head pointed in that direction. I got I got to tell you, man, like, just up this weekend, it just passed. I shot video footage for my wife at this uh, festival. For She has a new show that she's going to debut on YouTube on her channel. It's called um, For the Love of Bubbles. And, and basically... This is going to be programming about uh, cosmetics, natural cosmetics and others, and different, it's going to highlight different small uh, businesses where the people make their own products and they uh, promote and market and sell and go around to these different fe festivals and events and sell. It's a whole culture around that. And she's right. going to be you know, shedding light on that um, and, and getting these people some exposure or helping them get exposure so they can sell. Their, their products and, and help their business. And I think what she's doing is real important because it's something she used to do herself. And she was she was rather successful with it for a good period of time. So just me being out there with the camera, the mic, interviewing people, right. um, talking getting out, to them, getting outdoors. Get, yeah. Like, it's something about that that I find, like, very appealing. And just the idea that um, I'll be going to these comic book conventions video game um, functions, science museums, right. all these different things of interest that I know that the people in my uh, fan base and listenership are interested in as well. Um, this is fun for me because yeah. I feel like for the past, I say since 2009, um, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed a lot of the stuff that I did here on this channel, but it's been very heavy. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes, very heavy. sometimes you got to step it up. And to be honest, just to let people know, um, Lady Assassin, she's actually doing videos now. She started with her Motivational Mondays. Mm -hmm. She just put out her new one. When was it? Yesterday. Right. And you guys should check that out, too. Uh, I guess we could leave a link yeah, for her put, page put a link in the, um, the so they can check it out. Yeah, and also, we're going to – we're There It Is Entertainment and is pretty much planning to do the same thing that – um, um, Reaper Nation Network is um doing. We're gonna go on site and go to Repticons, um, go to the zoos, go to museums and interview people and stuff like that. Cause I feel like 
us being out in public shows, you know, that we have lives outside of the internet <laughs> for one. And it shows that we want we want to bring you guys into our lives, you know, because it's it's more you, than you guys are it's, awesome. It's entertaining. Um we of course we wanna keep up the entertainment value, but most of the things, you know, that our companies are gonna probably represent is gonna have an educational component to it. Right. Because learning doesn't have to be boring. Exactly. Learning doesn't have to be boring. You don't have to walk around with a stick up in your ass quoting facts all day. No, learning can be fun. And no, the grass sites improved that. Right. So I, I think I think um it's kind of my way of giving back. Uh, you know, like people support my albums and stuff like that. And they, they buy my merchandise and I interact with them on a constant basis. They watch my videos and, and I love you guys for that. And yeah. I just want to expose um you guys to more of what the things that I'm into and, and as a result, hopefully grab new people and show them that are outside of my normal audience that learning is can be fun. It doesn't have to be boring, it doesn't have to be stiff, it doesn't have to be stale. It's 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 fun. And we live in a an amazing time right now. Living in an amazing time right now. Right. Where you have the sum total of human knowledge right at your fingertips, in your pocket, as your phone. You know what I mean? Like, like you, right. you can you can find out almost anything you probably want to know that we have discovered or experimented or, 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 or whatnot right there in front of you. And I think yep. it's, it needs to be promoted because, you know, scientists, are, they have great minds, but all of them aren't necessarily communicators. Right, and that's where I, th- I feel like people like me and, and, and adequate and a few others that I know that are out there trying to do it. That's why I think we can do our part by promoting this stuff in the and way I think, that we know how to do it. And I think we have to continue doing that because science is very interesting, and learning new things is very interesting. And the fact that we have people that actually listen to us, I feel like we owe them. Like not not owe them more, but we owe them the best content that we could give them right. and provide to them. So that's that's basically what I gotta say. And, and, and we're, that's why I've we'll been continue upgrading. to do that. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's why I've been upgrading, um, getting um, new equipment to be able to do this because I want yeah. this to really pop. I want the the shows to have quality, and it's going to be a growing learning process too. But you're going to see straight off the straight out the gate when I launch um, the channel this summer. You're going to see straight out the gate. That we're up in the quality on everything. Yep. And just to let you guys know, there it is, a Reaper Nation. We're not just a group. We're, we're an actual family. We work, me and Landon, we work together on a lot of projects. And we've been doing that for a few years. And we have a lot of plans in the future. And just look out for them. And it'll be fucking awesome. And we're happy that you guys are along for the ride, too. It's going to be awesome. So I guess that will kind of wrap up the show this time. This was a great show, I got to say. Yeah, I, mean, I really enjoyed this. So I can pat my own stuff on the back. I was excellent. So, <laughs> I was I was better though. Come on, you, you got to give it to me. You got any um things you want to promote? People you want to shout out? Um, I want to shout out. Well, of course, Reaper Nation and there it is, Entertainment first, and then I want to shout out um Nessa GU for putting out her motivational Mondays video. You guys check that out when you put it in the um subscript in the description. And I also did a new video on Herptology that you guys might want to check out on my page. And I guess I shout out the Grand Unified family. And I think that's about it. Oh, and I'm also working on another album that should be coming out in July. It's called Summer School. I really wasn't going to say anything, but I'm going to just let you guys know. So Cool, cool. I just want to, um, first I want to shout out my wife. Um, because, you know, this past weekend, you know, and, you know, even before that, and, and everything that I do, she always has my back. She always has the great ideas. Half of the business sense that I do have, I acquired from her. Um, so I want to shout her out. I want to shout out Marissa Holiday. Right. Um, Miss No Play No Games. Yeah, I want to shout her out for all the stuff that she's done to help um, get me to this point. Um, I want to shout out Matthew Lofus, a.k.a. The Credible Hulk. Yep. That great article he wrote for the Reaper Nation website, and it broke records, too. That, that, oh, nice. It broke records. Uh, more people came to that website um, that one day 
um, for that one article than at any other time. So give, let me give him a shout out. I want to shout out my family, um, my daughter and my son, because they always, you know, right there to help with these things that we're doing. And um, I also definitely want to shout out the the, the, the audience of the, of the G Universe because you guys have been loyal. Um, you've always been there. I enjoy yep. interacting with you. I enjoy all of that. Um, and your support is what actually keeps us going. It yeah. actually makes a lot of the stuff that I've been able to do possible. So I definitely want to shout out that. Go and holler at me on Instagram. That's um, at Tombstone969. I'll have all of that in the description box. Um, and, my, of course, my artist page, Tombstone the Dead Man. You can look that up on um, on Facebook. I'll probably have the link in the description as well. And we will talk to you guys on episode six. Hell yeah. We almost half a year done, man. Almost half a year. So holla. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. Peace.